I'm David Four. I'm an interaction designer. I'm going to talk about a learning healthcare network called the C3N, the Collaborative Chronic Care Network. Uh, it's something that we've been working on in Cincinnati for quite some time. Uh, and I come at it from the uh, perspective of a, of a product designer where you show up and you say, we're from the internet and we've come to rearrange your furniture. Um, and it's really tempting, right? Because uh, look, it's the, the cat's out of the bag, right? You know, we can really do a lot of work. Uh, but the problem is, is that data isn't really the same thing as people. Data are really valuable, of course, and we all want to sort of beam down uh, these molecules of data onto planet health and everything's gonna be all right. Uh, but it turns out that uh, data don't have feelings, for instance. And so, well, uh, what about uh, disrupting these, uh, these, uh, uh, these businesses such as Mayo Clinic? Well, it's not so easy either because there's all of these organizational, uh, at the very least, organizational uh, uh, blockages. Uh, and maybe it has a lot to do with why Sony failed to make the leap into uh, 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 MP3 players. They had a lot of uh, business uh, objectives to satisfy every year, and it didn't have a lot to do with satisfying people, much less did it uh, have to do with deep design. Well, you could uh, hack um, Excel and, and make it into Pac-Man, uh, and that feels uh, a lot like it uh, to me, what, what hacking health is. Um, it's like uh, trying to get a, a cat to bark. Uh, the sound's not gonna be so great, it's gonna annoy the cat. Um, and so we have uh, electronic medical records, everybody's uh, favorite uh, uh, punching bag. It's not the same thing as care delivery either, right? Uh, we're, 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 we're trying to do something in a context that just isn't going to work very easily. Um, and uh, well, is this any mistake? Well, uh, it isn't a mistake, really, because every system is perfectly designed to achieve the results it gets. And so as a result of this system that we have, uh, we have super high costs up there, and uh, we have super low quality down there. Uh, and you could say, wow, are there, is this system really designed to produce uh, uh, perverse incentives? No. Well, yeah, actually it does. And uh, this is only one of very many reasons that uh, we have problems uh, changing our healthcare system. So what if we design things in a different way? What if we designed it around somebody like Orleans Jackson, age 14, just got her uh, freak out uh, diagnosis of uh, ulcerative colitis. Uh, she doesn't know what's worse, the, uh, the illness that brought her into the uh, clinic or the medicine that she's taking. Uh, she is isolated, but she's not alone. Uh, healthcare is not one, fit, uh, one size fits all. Uh, you have to actually look at the whole ecology, including, of course, the care providers who also need to be engaged, who also need to be activated, uh, which is really important in chronic care, which is where I work, uh, because really only about a quarter of us are receiving the care that we really need. And, uh, and no mistake, this is a system that is uh, really designed to deliver acute care. Uh, and uh, there are some exceptions. Uh, Improved Care Now is one that uh, uh, really uh, formed the foundation of the C3N. Over a very few short years using shoe leather and Excel, uh, they have been able to uh, increase the remission rates uh, from 55% to 73% in their population. They even do population management. Um, and so uh, this provides a foundation for what the Institute of Medicine calls a, um, a learning health network. Uh, and what we're doing in the C3N is to, in addition to uh, doing work with uh, pediatricians, uh, with the patients as well. And uh, so there's technical aspects of what we're doing, scientific aspects of what we're doing, and social aspects of what we're doing. Uh, Orleans and her father uh, are all part of the puzzle there. And that's all based upon ethnography that helps us understand what is the context that people are going to be uh, bringing to bear when they're looking at labs. They're going to be living with labs for a long time. And the, uh, the, the design constraints of a dot matrix printer have to be busted out. And uh, then you have an opportunity to frame uh, these labs in the context of, of people's lives. Same thing with inter-visit planning, which is great, except that most people really think of that as their lives. And how do you uh, communicate with people uh, who are trying to live their lives in a way that um, uh, is going to make them pretend like they aren't sick? Uh, and so this is one way that we're doing this uh, with our friends at Vital Reactor, Ian Eslick, some of you know. Uh, we've been co-developing this with the C3N, uh, ways uh, for people to communicate, oh, you know, I, have a, uh, I want to do yoga, I want to eat yogurt, how is that going to uh, help me get better? Uh, and so this, uh, these are all building blocks. Uh, all of these things, these, uh, these research techniques and these design techniques and the technologies uh, to uh, do not just work in inflammatory bowel disease, but also cystic fibrosis and diabetes and other kinds of, uh, uh, of, uh, care, uh, of care conditions. So maybe, uh, yeah, things suck right now uh, economically and the politics and all the rest, but maybe we are at a point now where we can really change the face of healthcare.
Thank you.